All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about something that I think is pretty cool, at least for me, and this might kind of pave the way for the channel. Now, all channel stuff aside, we are going to be looking at today the what I'm dubbing my SMR. Now, yes, I am another one of those YouTubers creating my own acronyms, but today we're gonna to be talking a look, <laughs> taking a look at something that I whipped up that I think is pretty darn cool. And we'll be going over the SMR, what that means, and how this build fits it. So first off, let's talk about what an SMR is. Now, like I said, I am inventing terms here, but essentially what I wanted this rifle to be was a semi-marksman rifle. Now, before we get into what this kind of setup and um, kind of the overall SMR idea, um, I want to say this is this is a essentially an FAL clone. Um, of course, DS Arms makes FALs. This is an SA-58 from DS Arms, and this isn't just any um, SA-58. This is their OSW model. Now, those will be important in just a moment. Now, what I mean, what do I mean when I talk about an SMR or a semi-marksman rifle? So, for the most part, when you hear about DMRs or designated marksman rifles, you typically think of things like the M14 EBR, the M21 EBR, um, or the M1A. You think of things like even FALs, you think of G3s, you think of SCAR Hs or SCAR 17s or SCAR 20s. Um, you think of particularly 308 kind of battle rifles. And that is essentially at the core what this is. Of course, being an FNFAL clone, this is a 308 rifle. And of course, like I said, um, this is just a clone of an FNFAL. Now, personally, when it comes down to why did I choose an FNFAL over the aforementioned, you know, different other rigs like M1As, um, SCAR Hs and stuff like that is predominantly because I really like the FNFAL. I think it's a really cool system platform and it's always been one that I've never, like I can't necessarily give it a specific reason as to why I love it, but I've always really loved it the FNFAL as a system. I think it's really cool, I think it looks cool. I don't hate the um, manual of arms on it. And overall, I just think it's a really awesome gun. Now there's also some really cool history to it. It is one of those, much like most battle rifles, it is one of those, you know, Cold War era, um, com block kind of styled firearms. Now, of course, the um, FNFAL has a rich track record of being more on the side of the good guys. The, of course, this is called the right arm of the free world. So it's had a little bit of a different history with the whole Cold War era, but that is definitely where this gun originates from. Now, the one unfortunate thing about most FNFALs is that um, they were never really modernized. So you look at things like the AR-10, it kind of saw more modernization. You know, you see M-Lock uh, pick rails, you see, um, you know, just more, it's brought into the 21st century. You even see the AK in a similar way, people bring it into the 21st century first century, of course, the AR-15 being brought into the 21st century. Um, but unfortunately, you never really saw the FNFAL see that same kind of transition. That was, of course, until the OSW by DS Arms. So this is actually, I believe, one of the little bit older OSWs. I think the most modern versions use an M-Lock uh, foregrip as opposed to this quad rail as you guys can see here but um, the OSW or operation specialist weapon or wep yeah uh, from DS arms is an attempt to bring the FNFAL into the 21st century so this is what it looks like at its core I'll pop this big magazine out of here which we will talk about in a little bit um, and so this is essentially it so what you're dealing with at the core is you have an AR-15 styled buffer tube so you can mount any type of AR-15 collapsible, you know, multi-position stock on there. It also still retains the fact that this is an FAL, so, you know, you don't have any actual use of the buffer tube, so this is also a folding stock. In addition, you have a flat top on this for pick rail, um, and so you can throw basically anything you want on it. And then, of course, like I said, you have essentially a forward quad rail uh, of also pick tinny. So this is essentially... Um, OSW, a kind of modernization of the FAL. Now, the other thing that the OSW does is that it goes with a much shorter barrel. Now, this is still legally a rifle, but um, this is essentially, for all intents and purposes, practically speaking, more of an SBR, because if it wasn't for this about four inch 
flash hider right here. The barrel length itself is about 12 and a half inches. So this guy is a little bit shorter, but it gives you a really nice package that is very maneuverable, even with the rifle, um, you know, with the stock at a you know reasonable operating length, still very compact, still very portable, and still very maneuverable. So it gives you an overall package that is, like I said, still pretty compact. And I think that this is actually pretty cool to see because when a lot of people think of the FNFAL system, they think of it like the Rhodesian FALs that had 21 inch barrels or they think of the L1A ones, once again, 21 inch barrels. Um, they think of like in these long flash hiders on those long barrels and you know, you have your plastic foregrip and just overall not a lot of customization. They're large, they're clunky and they're hard to maneuver. This is very much, as you can see, a radical departure from all of those things. Now, of course, like I said, at the core, this still is definitely an FAL, still, you know, accepts 7.62 FD1, um, NATO, so this is still definitely that type of rifle. But, like I said, it is definitely a lot more modernized. Now, getting back to the semi-marksman rifle idea with this gun. So, when I got this, I knew, like I said, that I wanted an FNF FN FAL or, you know, an FN clone or a FAL clone, um, but I wanted something that was that something that could modernize and the OSW seemed about perfect for me. Now, to be fair, like I said, the reason why I call this a semi-marksman rifle is because I don't think that this fits well into the typical DMR type role. Once again, primarily because you have this 12 and a half inch barrel and you know, there is definitely going to be a loss of velocity, a loss of distance, and of course, accuracy and ballistic effect out to range. So realistically speaking, when it comes to a shorter barrel like this, although it definitely is, you know, kind of something that's more of the day, you know, like a lot of us talk about, you know, 14.5, um, for barrel lengths on ARs and stuff like that. So definitely a little bit more modern in form of barrel length, but at the same time too, like I said, you're not going to be pushing this out to you know 600 yards. But in my mind, when I was trying to construct something like a semi-marksman rifle, what I wanted was a 308 slash 7.62-51, which is what this is. And I wanted something that had essentially a good ability to reach out to about 300 yards tops and could reach closer than about 25 yards. And so optimally for me, the build consists around my preferred distance or range of engagement for this would be about 25 to 50 yards. And of course, with the 308, it certainly has the capability to push well beyond that easily to 100 yards. And given this setup, it also has the ability to close that distance and be sub 10 yards. So that's what I wanted ultimately for a semi-marksman rifle was something that would be a rifle that can go out to 300 yards, but isn't really designed to you know, reliably go out to distance, but really putting more of its kind of eggs in the basket of short distance. So this is kind of a catch-all, do-all rifle, but with a preference towards short distance. Um, and so for me, that is how this gun is set up. Now, um, let's actually go over this gun in its entirety. And for that, I will throw this magazine back in because I think that this magazine is instrumental to the whole setup. So. Let's start off with the stock. So the stock on this guy is not actually the original stock. When I got it, it had a BCM gunfighter stock. A lot of people love those stocks. I just really never liked them. And so what I chose was, I chose the Magpul STR. Now the reasons I like the STR are twofold. One, I think it actually looks cool. I think it has that kind of G-Watt era um, M4A1 kind of stock to it. And essentially what the STR is, is a, wider version of the normal standard Magpul stock. And I think one, it looks cool, but the other reason why I genuinely like it is hopefully on the camera, you guys can see here that when you um, shoulder the rifle, given that you have that extra width on that stock, it really gives you a lot better cheek weld. And especially with things like FALs, AKs, you're not really able to get your cheek squarely on because if you're having to you rise up to look through any optic like this, this one here, which we'll get to in just a minute, you kind of have to do more of a chin weld on your rifle stock. But what's nice is that because this is an STR stock, because there's a lot of, um, there's a overall a lot of width on this stock, you just get a really good purchase. So I love STR stocks on 
any of my go-to like fighting rifles and stuff, I have STR stocks. They're something that I like, and it's primarily because of, like I said, you just get that extra cheek weld or extra chin weld if you have to push up and look through an optic. It just means that you get an overall more stable mount when you actually shoulder your rifle. All right, moving up, we have a primary arms micro prism, and this is their times three or three times um, micro prism. Now, some people might be asking, why did I choose the micro prism? This is definitely an interesting time to be alive with fighting rifles because there are tons of options. You can run a red dot with a magnifier, you can run LPVO, you can run prisms such as ACOGs or micro prisms like this guy. And the primary reason I chose the micro prism from Primary Arms was because I really liked the um, simplicity to it. I also liked the fact that it is very lightweight. It is the lightest weight version of anything that I could have chose. LPVOs will be heavier. Um, a magnifier with a red dot, of course, will be heavier. An ACOG would be heavier. This guy is seven ounces. And I really was attracted to that because as you guys will probably know, any of your 308 battle rifles are not light. And this one, notwithstanding, especially the OSW is one of the heavier models of FALs that um, DS Arms sells. It's because you have a full metal, you know, um, quad rail here, you have a full metal um, <clears throat> pick rail or flat top up here. So there's just a lot of extra metal on this rifle and FALs already have a lot of metal. They're not something that is very, you know, like lightweight and plastic and, you know, like the only, th like realistically out of box, the only three things that are plastic on this rifle is your hand grip, your stock, and this little charging arm right here, this little charging handle, sorry. And everything else is steel or aluminum. So these are naturally pretty heavy. So other things I like about the uh, micro prism is it does have an AC, ACSS reticle on it. This one just has to be a Raptor. It is bullet drop compensated for um, 308. So this is appropriate for the round that it fires. And of course I cited it in with M80 ball. Now the drops may not be the most accurate because those are for full rifle lengths, whereas this is a little bit more of an SBR length, but it still offers good bullet drop compensation. And the thing that I like about the micro prism um, is that it gives you a really good, um, similar to an ACOG, it gives you a really good ability to, you know, like have a magnified optic, but at the same time too, given the chevron and given the overarching circle in the reticle, um, it gives you really good close range. So once again, engagements 25 yards and in, you can still find the large portion, just that, you know, kind of circular half up or like three quarter circle and use that as your um, kind of mark for shooting. Of course, to micro prism, this micro prism is illuminated, but the nice thing about it is due to the fact that it is a micro prism, it is semi like a scope. So you have your reticle cut into the actual optic. So you have illumination if you need it, similar to an LPVO, um, but you also just have a reticle in your optic. Now, like I said, I chose the three times because I didn't really want a huge, like massively Pow or massive power um, magnification on these micro prisms uh, from primary arms do go up to five power. So I could choose a more powerful one, but I think the three times realistically works for me. All right, so moving on to that, um, not necessarily so that's you know, like super hard to get or super specific, but I am running 30 round magazines for these. And once again, um, 30 round magazines, some people might think like, isn't that just the standard issue for, you know, a rifle, but most of your 308 battle rifles are gonna be 20 round magazines. The 30 rounders um, are definitely a little bit larger and a little bit more unwieldy, but I think it is worth having the extra 10 rounds, especially if 308, because um, when it comes to it, a lot of magazine, uh, holders or pouches on things such as plate carriers and stuff when it comes to 308 due to its extra width is already going to be limited. So I like having that 10 extra rounds in the magazine so that if you're running a plate carrier with, you know, magazine pouches, you have the extra um, 10 rounds in each magazine. So it does add up, you know, if you're running three magazines, one in the gun and two on your uh, plate carrier, then it gives you an extra total of 30 rounds. So not a huge, huge difference, but you know, it's one of those things that a lot of the 308 boys don't necessarily think about. And uh, like I said, I'm running all my magazines with this. 30 rounds, so, or all minor 30 rounders. So definitely helpful, especially too, for any close range engagements. Having extra firepower is already always nice. 
All right, so let's go up to this quad rail. We have a little bit going on here. First off, we'll talk about the sling. This is an MC4 or MS, MS4, there we go. MS4 for Magpul. A lot of this stuff is Magpul just because I know them, I like them, and I know that it will um, just plug and play with my equipment very well. So this is an MS4. It just uses QD mounts, as you guys can see there. Um, it does have the ability to become a single point sling, but I just primarily like it for its QD points on the, um, rifle, I can easily pop it on and off. Next to that, we have the um, RFG, I believe it is. Um, they're just standard go-to vertical foregrip. I like theirs because um, theirs is already pretty low uh, profile. It's not as short as BCM's like gunfighter grip, but it is pretty pretty low already and so I don't mind it. I think it's you know good for me and most of the time when I'm leveling this rifle I'm using a form of a modified C-clamp so I'm kind of half on the grip half on the rifle and that's just the way that I've kind of grown up shooting my ARs and AKs so that's just kind of the way that I address the rifle and it works beautifully here. Now Aside from that, we also have a flashlight holder here. Of course, this is a through night. I'm forgetting the name of, but this is a through night. And currently it looks a little bit funky because I have the red light filter on. And I'm leaving the red light filter on for now because uh, most of the time when you're gonna be using a flashlight, it's gonna be nighttime anyways. So having the red light filter does um, decrease the amount of overall illumination of the flashlight, but it reduces your signature a lot as well. So definitely not like an IR illuminator, but it definitely kind of is like in between just white light and um, just, you know, like IR light. So I like it. It works pretty well for me. And yeah, no complaints on that. Uh, so aside from that, we also have the XR rail covers or X, XR, XT something like that, rail covers. I mentioned in a previous video, the only reason I have those on there is just because quad rails are sharp. If you've ever ran them, you'll see and you'll notice with a lot of GWA era M4A1s and stuff, they have rail covers on them just because, uh, like I said straight up, um, quad rails are sharp, they suck, um, and they will rip everything up. They will rip your hands up, they'll rip barricades up, they'll rip everything that they touch up, which is not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but, uh, yeah, it's, they just tear everything up. So yeah, that is basically the overlook of my rifle here. And about the only thing that I'm currently going to change is this little guy right here when I bought this rifle. It came with this, um, and I bought this second hand, but when I bought it, um, it came with this cheap kind of QD mount right here. And the QD mount is kind of, it's not failing, like the sling hasn't popped off, but it's very weird and it's not really holding up to much use. Like I've literally taken this guy out um, like once or twice and and it's already like really acting weird. So it's like a $10 little, you know, Chinese aluminum mount. And I really wasn't expecting it to fail as it is, but it's super hard to depress the uh, QD point on this. So I'm already having a Magpul um, quick detach mount coming in for this so that will change but realistically speaking um, that's about it for this rifle i wanted to keep it pretty slick um, as it is and that is primarily just due to weight um, like i said you know bone dry like empty you know or you know slick without anything on this gun it is already a nine pound gun and to be fair like just to be clear you know like i said a lot of your 308 battle rifles are not going to be lightweight um, things like m1a's are heavy um, scar h's or SCAR 17s are some of your lightest weight options and even those are about eight pounds empty and naked and so like th these guns like no 308 battle rifle is a particularly light rifle so I just didn't want to throw like a PEC 15 on this and like all these kinds of things I do definitely have a lot of rail space for extra additions but it's something that like I kind of wanted to do but at least for the time being I'm going to try to leave it pretty slick just because like I said previously you know these guns are heavy so if it's you know if you're dealing with like a 17 or sorry a seven pound ar you know you have a couple pounds less of weight already you know stock um, that you can add attachments and 
lights and lasers and you know scopes and all that kind of stuff. So um, you know previously I I still have my AR, but you know like previously that was my main go-to rifle, and I had the luxury of being able to really do whatever I wanted because once again weight wasn't really a huge concern. But starting with something like a rifle that's already nine pounds, you know, naked and empty is definitely something that you want to, you know, like be a little bit more conscientious on what you're putting on the rifle. So that is how it's set up. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed going over this with me. Like I said, this is my semi-marksman rifle is kind of the build intent on this. It's something that's meant to be a kind of like do all catch all kind of rifle that can be used close quarters and like I said, inside of 10 yards. And certainly it does have that capacity. Um, you can drop your stock in to be super close on your, your uh, rifle. And once again, the uh, Prism Optic does have a, you know, it's a CSS Raptor. So you do have the ability to use it in a larger sense to quickly engage targets or quickly you know find your uh, reticle for up close and personal but you can also you know kind of extend your stock out get into a little bit more of a marksman rifle style setup and really take your time with shots so this rifle can kind of do it all and <clears throat> this rifle can kind of do it all and uh, overall i'm just pretty stoked with the way it came out of course all of these builds are for fun um and I think it's, you know, that's the biggest thing with guns, similar to the knives and stuff that I've talked about on the channel, you know, a lot of this stuff is just done for the fun of it. It's not necessarily that, you know, you try to LARP or play mill sim or play military. It's definitely not the intent of this, but you know, once you're an adult, you have to have adult passions and, you know, hobbies and stuff. And this is definitely um, one that I take a lot of uh, joy and pride and uh, have a lot of fun with. So hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at this rifle and this whole setup. I think it's just like I said, a lot of fun um, to kind of play around with these builds and make things happen. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God.